How's it going? All right. Nice to see you. I've got a walk up the stairs. How are you? Nice. Fantastic. This is my printed press. It's a Hunter Penrose Little John etching press. Probably made, I think, probably 40s, 50s, 60s. I think maybe 60s, looking at this box on it. They're kind of so valuable and hard to come by. Yeah. And it's really just wonderful for me, really, because, you know, it means I can print whenever I want. Can you do everything on that thing? Uh, yeah, I'm doing lino cuts on it at the minute. So I'm just yeah. testing out some colour, different colourways on lino cuts. Um, and the biggest print I can do is that one on this press, and that's called the Topiarist, and that's a three plate lino cut. Three plates, uh, in fact that's a four plate lino cut, it needed some extra detail, um, and I inked them up in different colours as well. I mean you can see here how differently that is inked in, you know, like different blues. Yes, yeah. Um, and I kind of, I mean I love colour for that. Yeah. I'm, in a way, I mean I'm kind of wanting to feel more knowledgeable about colour and get and get more practised in combining colour because yeah. it's kind of, I kind of like the random nature of it, especially because you're printing transparent colour sometimes, so you're printing one colour over another, you don't know quite how it's going to ping or not, Yeah. and I'm, sometimes I'm printing again over the top. I like working small actually, I mean it's just one of those things, um, I sketch in little sketchbooks and yeah. you know, you know these are kind of the size I feel really comfortable making. And I like making things for people to, you know, put on their walls, that's the thing. You know, I kind of always wanted to make art that people found decorative, but that had some meaning as well. Yeah. Whether it's meaning to me or them, but I mean, there's a lot of, you know, people can read whatever they want into images, can't they? And these are all little fantasies about going on holiday, because I haven't been on holiday for a long time. <laughs> it's, they are, they're just like little island escapes, really. But I just ended up scribbling on a bit of lino with pencil, and then the, the, the yeah. uh, composition kind of just organically comes really. Um, I've got aphantasia which means I don't have a mind's eye so I don't see visual images so this is kind of a way of creating um, images from my imagination by looking at things a bit like paradoidal where you're sort of like looking at something and see something in it. Yeah. So things arise from scribbles and I can see things I see. in so the actual The process image. itself generates Imagery. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. But um, do you, do you have a plan? Do you have a basic plan? Sometimes. Do you have a skyline, for instance, and a, Yeah. I mean, or uh, I'll just you know draw a line that might become yeah. a skyline, or um, yeah. and they kind of have this organic feel because you know they are from swirls of pencil. I mean, that's kind of the rhythm of scribbling on a bit of paper. But some, I mean, that's not always the case. I mean, I do use photography a lot. These are commissions for train posters down in Kent. Yeah. And, you know, I went to the places, took a lot of documentary phot phot photographs of the actual place and then kind of put them together as a composite. This is a duck pond which is in the centre of a roundabout and the village also has a solar system and I've done the ripples on the duck and then I thought, oh, this is the solar system, you could put planets into it. So that's kind of, it's kind of just finding ways of yeah. representing something because it was meant to represent all the things in the village. And there's a, a sort of nostalgic edge to it. I see the Spitfire, you know. Yeah, well, and there's always a Spitfire flying around there because there's a little airfield where people get taken up in it. But, I mean, it's always there when you're in that valley. I mean, I used to basically make a painting and that would become a print and I've kind of moved away from that, actually. Yeah. I've kind of now just drawn directly onto Lino to see what happens on it. Um, so there's no, in a way, you know, when I'm making things yeah. in my head, it's like there's no preparatory work. Yeah. Um, but I am working on a liner cut of the Long Man of Wilmington, which I went to last year. And of course, then you have to sort of say, well, if it is that place, it has to look like the place. So mm. I don't mind, you know, looking at my source materials and doing sketches to sort of see what works compositionally and work, moving things around. Yeah. Sometimes change the way a lane goes just because it's a better composition, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to do a liner cut of the view out my window, which you can have a look at on your little camera in a minute, which is sort of the view down towards the Thames Barrier. Let's do that now. There's the Thames Barrier. 
and so I've just sort of planned out this little square lino cut. I've done a lino cut of Greenwich Park recently, and I thought I would just do a few more London lino cuts, actually. Yeah. I've always, because all my imagination things are sort of out in Wales and sort of, you know, places that I love. Um, it's kind of interesting to start looking at the place I'm in. I tend to sort of do things for my imagination a lot of the time, but then I'm here a lot, you know, and I kind of want to depict yeah. uh, the places that I spend a lot of time. Um, and it's just finding the right view for me. I mean, I'm not very interested in doing things that are completely photographic um, or just pictorially, this is the place. It has to yeah. have some interest. So I want to kind of lead people into places. Somebody's walking along the top, so there's kind of an interactive element to the landscape. Um, so even though, I mean, I've been at the studio for seven years now, and I've never really thought about it, and I was just looking at this view and thinking, oh, there is a composition right here from my studio window, which is just waiting yeah, yeah, to yeah, be done. Yeah. It's quite an unusual viewpoint, I think. I love artists from the 1940s. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And uh, they often yeah. come into my work. I, don't want to, I wanted to ask you about that era, mm. you know, and what you've... You know, what you find so appealing about it. I mean, I find it appealing as well. Um, can you put it into words? I think it's the escapist element. I mean, basically, they were deep in the war and everybody was kind of isolated in Britain. And it's almost like being, you know, stuck on an island and then mm. looking very insular. It's like looking into yourself and looking into the land that you're in. Yeah. And it all becomes kind of expressed. I mean, a bit like Palmer did in Shoreham. I mean, they loved Palmer, you know, who'd been shown to them in the third, 20s, 30s, and um, what they were doing is kind of instilling their inner world in the landscape, it always feels. Everything's quite enclosed and womb-like, and it seems very protective. It's mm. like nature's giving them some sort of nestling place away from the horrors of war. And Palmer was getting, you know, to shore yeah. because of the Industrial Revolution and escaping London and all the filth in London because of what was going on. I'm just recalling that Nash picture of the one of the hay, hay bales he did oh, yeah. when he returned from the war and I think he said something like you know I was just so glad to be back and alive yeah. after the, the horrors the you horrors, know yeah and he depicted Berlin, really, yeah. you know yeah. there was that fierce element and the same in Sutherland you know it's like all the thorn trees and all of those all of that attacking nature yeah all that whole was expressed through nature which is really interesting actually you yeah. know, it's not didn't have to be a picture of a soldier or a picture of somebody attacking or bomb going off I mean, Nash did a lot of that, but he was a war artist. It all seems to be expressing the subconscious quite specifically during that period, mm. which is what mm. I like, and it's kind of dark and it's enclosed. Um, yeah. But also it's about the magic of place as well. You know, it's like Nash coming back and saying, this is wonderful, you know, to be here. Yeah. There's a sort of queasiness when you consider nationality, you know, it, you know in a sort of post-colonial atmosphere, art atmosphere. Uh, you know, you, you seem quite un unusual, and that you're, it, it's something that that's infused in your work somehow. Yeah, it is. I kind of think about And I wouldn't have you down as an Ashley, I think, you know, I can't, you know. No, I mean, I kind of not very into flag waving or anything like that at all, but then I do feel very attached to this island and the land and place. Um, and of course, it, you know, it's fair to say it's deeply unfashionable, that era of British art at the moment. Yeah, you know? they don't get... I mean, it's interesting because Pallant House seems to be the place that represents a lot of British art very well, I think, you know, in terms of giving yeah. exhibitions to what were the major artists pre-1955, where they're looking at those that particular period. And it has come back into fashion with artists, in a way, who make, especially yeah. printmakers... Yeah, um, and especially designers as well who work, reference it a lot but in terms of the art world um, there's not a huge amount of interest in it apart from I mean, but you do see it at print fairs I mean Eames is very good with Sutherland recently and Passmore and like artists from a particular from particular mm. spots mm. Um, and I think that's what printmaking is quite good for and it seems to me that's important to you that, that people can own something and put it in their living room for instance yeah you know? I mean I always wanted to make things for people that you know to put on their wall I kind of like the joy of a small picture I mean I buy a lot of art um, and I like to be able to hold it, you know, and look at detail. I mean, I love mm. detail. And I noticed this kind of compressed kind of imagery 
this kind of deep framing of trees and hollows and sort mm. of veils and, and pass wind, winding mm. through the picture. You know, I associate that. Yeah, you know, we're familiar with that, aren't we? With that, the art of the period you like. You know, yes. That kind of it's more like a kind of sh- a sheltering. It to, is. It's a womb-like thing. It's where nature yeah. can be protective, and it will give you solace, and it will take you away from your troubles really and I I walk a lot I like walking alone in the countryside when I go out to Wales or whatever Um, and I do like I mean obviously as an artist you spend a lot of time alone I'm quite comfortable being alone and making my things and I get a lot of joy and solace as well from making pictures and I think there is that I want people to be taken into landscapes I want to lead them to a place you know, that was mm. maybe not where they are right now. I mean, I love it when people look at pictures and say, this reminds me of, you know, a place I've been to or a feeling that I had when I was, yeah, you know, travelling. And I kind of think, yeah, that's kind of... I do want to get you away from just the mundanity of everyday existence. Yeah. I mean, I can see when people like them, you know, if I'm doing an art fair or something, and they're like... Oh, they, you can see them kind of really looking into things, looking into the lane and looking... And, and like, trying to... Uh, work out mm. who this figure is, is and they say is that you and I say well no it's somebody walking into that landscape and they're kind of identifying with that figure and my aim is to get other people to go into them you know you want to know what's around the corner of the lane or yeah. over the hill yeah. and I kind of like placing that distance through composition as well I mean they're not really to do there's not a lot of aerial perspective a lot of the time to create distance it's mostly compositional where the, the distance is as important as the foreground I see yeah I think a lot of my work is really romantic and I guess there's an element of fantasy in it because you're not looking at reality with romanticism you are romanticising something which means that often you're making it um, a bit unreal and a bit idealistic Mm. and you will make idols that Maybe don't exist, but you know, it's like when I when I said about going to um, Wales. I mean, I found that the landscape there was romantic in terms of my head. I mean, it's to do with your own feeling yeah. towards a landscape. It's about the special nature of life to me. Romanticism. It's that amazing feeling you get when you're in a landscape. That connection that you might have to mm. place 